So hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Computer. And in this video, I will show you how to compute Coulomb beam capacity ratio manually. As we have to show a sample calculation in the report as well in some uh, municipalities. But it is also uh, better to understand how it is computed. So in the structural report, we have to show this calculation in the annexures that is the computation of the Coulomb beam capacity. So for this, basically, we have to consider the required Coulomb beam moment capacity ratio. For example, in case of IS code, it is 1.4 and in case of NBC 105-2020, it is 1.2. So basically, it is the capacity that explains that at every beam Coulomb junction in a frame, the summation of the moment capacities of the Coulomb shall be greater than 1.2 times of the summation of beam end moment capacity. Here MC is the sum of design moment of resistance of the column and summation MB is the design moment of resistance of beam at the intersection of beam and column center lines. Beam column joint is one of the weakest component in the building. As we know during earthquake that the gravity loading on the building causes RC frame to bend resulting in stretching and shortening at various locations. Even if we see in uh, elevation view let us see considering this as a joint okay this reason so under the influence of the earthquake loading certain part of the beam and column undergoes shortening and stretching and this leads to tension and compression respectively and this tension that occurs on beam and column at different locations than that of the gravity loading for example this reason the bottom face of the beam might face tension under gravity loading but in case of earthquake the top face of the column or beam may face tension and as we see that the column receives the load from the beam we try to make beam weaker than that of the column such that damage is likely to occur in the beam first hence if the beam is detailed properly or the beam column connection is detailed properly then building as a whole can undergo a large deformation even if the beam yields. So here the concept capacity attempts to set a strength hierarchy along the load path. It generally allows to occur damage at a predefined location. So the location is predefined for the damages. And this BCC ratio basically provides an expression to prevent story mechanism of collapse due to possible damage location that is the hinge formation location in columns by suggesting over strength factor of column with respect to beam. So as we know there is formation of plastic hinges and basically plastic hinge represents inability to resist moment and these are formed near the joint or support and these are the reasons where maximum bending moment occurs such as confinement zones as well. Through strong column weak beam capacity, we ensure that energy dissipation to be uniform because this reason requires much more strength to dissipate that energy and uniform energy dissipation occurs rather than being concentrated at particular floor level. So with this introduction of capacity or column capacity or strong column, we are trying to move the plastic hinge away from the joint so that instability which is formed due to these hinges are avoided. So basically we have to understand the collapse mechanism of the building that is considering the strong column weak beam. So basically the formation of hinges can occur in either beam or column. So our main aim is to restrict the formation of plastic hinges in the beam rather than the column. So in the figure you can see these are the two. One is the mechanism of strong column weak beam and this is the weak column and strong beam. So in this the hinges are being formed in the beam and in this column. As we know all the structural components transfer their forces through column and column shears is with the foundation to swell. So we can simply understand that if a column fails that whole structure can fail. So, what we'll try is to create a strong column and weak beam, which basically means actual flexural capacity of the beam should be less than that of the column. So, this is the basic theory for beam column capacity. Now, let us see how to compute this. So, for computing the column beam capacity, we'll be using this Excel sheet. And in this Excel sheet, we have to input the data for column and beam, such as column dimension, column reinforcement, column 
concrete grade column concrete uh, grade of steel similarly for the beam also we have to input the same data and accordingly we will compute the column beam capacity depending upon the flexural capacity of column and beam so let us assume this as the elevation and this being the upper story column and this is the lower story column and this is the beam on the either side considering this as the right beam and this as the left beam and assuming that the right beam undergoes hugging moment simultaneously the left beam undergoes sagging moment then we will compute the moment capacity at this intersection the column on the upper story and lower story may have different area of reinforcement so accordingly we have to compute the flexural capacity similarly the moment capacity on basis of the section undergoing hugging moment similarly we have to compute the moment resistance for this beam considering that it undergoes sagging moment so basically sagging moment is also termed as positive bending and hugging moment is termed as negative bending and accordingly the steel is also termed or is provided on the positive zone and the negative zone for sagging and hugging moment respectively hugging moment being compressive in nature so it requires a material that performs better under the compressive nature load and similarly sagging moment being tensile in nature it requires a material that is strong in the tensile accordingly the moment capacity is computed so let me give you a brief idea about this excel sheet so we have to input the data for the yellow cell only and other will be computed automatically as i have assigned certain formulas so here you can see for the moment calculation of the column we are giving data such as grade of concrete grade of steel dimension of the column and effective cover and this we can get from etabs similarly as i said we have to compute the flexural capacity of the upper column and lower column similarly for the upper column and lower column we have to input certain data such as axial load acting on that column area of reinforcement provided and the clear cover provided for it so accordingly we can use sp16 chart and compute the moment resistance for the column and one thing we have to consider is the size of the column that is for the square column the moment of inertia about any axis will be same so we will get moment carrying capacity or the flexural capacity as same for a particular area of reinforcement and the axial load but for in case of rectangular column we will have one axis as a major axis and another as a minor axis that is stronger and weaker axis so accordingly we will get the flexural capacity to be in the safe side or we can say a conservative approach we will compute the flexural capacity considering weaker axis that is for a rectangular column if we consider d as a greater dimension then we can get the uh, lesser moment of inertia considering b cube b by 12 that is cube term for the smaller dimension also you can see here fc cube b square d so i am giving the square term to the smaller dimension then obviously we will get smaller flexural capacity of the column so same thing is to be done for the upper column and lower column and by adding this two we will get the total moment capacity of the column similarly for the moment capacity calculation for beam we will input the grade of concrete grade of steel basically at the intersection we will get the same grade of concrete for column and beam and dimension of the beam is to be entered here and effective cover and effective depth will be computed accordingly and then we will calculate the area of reinforcement for beam at the top and bottom that is top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement and accordingly we will compute the sagging moment and hugging moment so as i said sagging moment being tensile in nature this is resisted by the steel so the sagging moment is computed using this formula that is 0.87 fy ast so basically you can see here 0.87 fy ast and this is from the nxg clause g 1.1 a here you can see so the bottom steel here provided will be used for computing the sagging moment and this is ast bottom so this is for the sagging similarly hugging moment being compressive in nature it is resisted by the concrete so we'll compute the hugging moment considering this terms that is mu1 plus mu2 so basically moment due to balance section and moment due to compression is still provided by summing these two that is sagging moment and hugging moment we'll get the moment capacity for the beam and finally by dividing the moment capacity of column and beam we'll get the column beam capacity ratio so now let us enter the data and then we'll check whether the section is sufficient or not so after analyzing and checking the concrete frame design we'll get this and select one of the column we'll check for the capacity so considering this column 
so this will be the lower column and this will be the upper column so firstly we have to enter the data for the upper column and generally the grid of concrete the grid of steel dimension will be same so let me select this one right click on this you will get this window and go for the details and here you will have the data that is required for computing the column beam capacity so grade of concrete is 25 similarly grade of steel is 500 so okay width of column and depth of column so it is a square column so 700 and 700 effective cover so basically this is equal to clear cover plus diameter of shear bar plus longitudinal bar size divided by 2 so considering 40 as clear cover 10 as the stirrup and 20 mm as the maximum size of the longitudinal bar we get this as 60 mm now for computing the flexural capacity of either column that is upper column and lower column we have to input the data so pu being the axial load so this is 2714 so 2715 we can directly write this as 27 percentage reinforcement so required reinforcement is 0 0.8 okay 0 0.8 and ratio of effective cover divided by dimension so this is 0 0.09 pt by fck that is percent of reinforcement divided by grade of steel 0 0.03 and axial force ratio that is pu by fck bd this comes as 0.22 and using this three we will compute the flexural capacity from sp16 so from chart sp16 here we have to compare value of fy d dash by d and reinforcement being provided equal in force side we can use this chart that is chart 48 the value near to 0.1 so 0.09 it is nearly equal to 0.1 so we will be using this chart for PU by FCK BD as 0.22 and PT by FCK as 0.03 we can compute the value of MU by FCK BD square one thing we have to consider here we are considering D dash by D and MU by FCK BD square so in case if we are using B square by D then it should be D dash by B so let us compute this value 0.22 so over here and PT by FCK as 0.3 so it will be between these two values 0 0.02 and 0 0.04 so 0 0.22 and 0 0.4 so this comes as 0 0.8 0 0.08 so we get the flexural capacity of the upper column as 686 kilonewton meter or to be in the conservative side we can just put this value as 0 and we will get u by fck bd as 0 and for mu fck bd square considering pt fck as 0 0.03 we get the value as 0 0.06 over here so this score will end over this so 0 0.06 so we'll get a value slightly less so 514.5 kilonewton meter so we can go with this approach also or we can just put the exact value so this was for the upper column now for the lower column other things will remain same that is the dimension at the grid of concrete the difference will be for the axial load and the reinforcement so it is 3187 so you can check over here the axial load and reinforcement provided is 0 0.8 so it is okay it cannot be less than that of the upper column we get the value for pufck as 0 0.26 so we might get a greater moment capacity so this will be 0 0.26 and so we will get this value as 0 0.09 so 771 kN so total moment capacity of column comes as 1457.75 kN at the intersection now let us compute the moment capacity of beam so at the intersection the grade of concrete and steel will be same so I am keeping this equal to that of the column 25 and 500 and grade of uh, the size of the beam at the intersection is to be checked here so we had considered this column this is the lower column and this is upper column so this is the beam at the intersection so for one case we have to consider this direction and for another we have to consider this direction so right click on this so we'll just take the dimension the moment uh, that is the sagging moment and hugging moment is computed based on the steel provided and the section size that is the balance section so go to details here the dimension are 500 and 650 so depth uh, width is 500 depth is 650 effective cover so clear cover as 25 stirrup size as 
10 and maximum bar size let me keep this as 20 then we'll get 45 mm as the clear cover that is the effective cover so effective depth will be 650 minus 45 so this comes as 605 okay area of steel top area of steel bottom so we have 750 and 750 so this being hogging moment and this being the sagging moment the area of steel uh, influencing are different that is for the hogging moment it will be the top steel and for the sagging moment it will be the bottom steel so for the AST top 750 that will be responsible for hogging and similarly for AST bottom 750 this will be responsible for sagging so depth of neutral axis firstly we have to compute the depth of neutral axis and accordingly we will compute the sagging moment so from annex G clause G.1.1 A we have this formula that is XU by D is equal to 0.87 FY AST by 0.36 FCK BD we get the value of XU as 73 mm substituting the value and sagging moment is nothing but 0.87 FY AST into 0 uh, D minus 0.42 XU will get the value for the sagging moment so using this exact depth of neutral axis will compute the sagging moment at the left side so which comes as 187.45 kN meter and similarly right beam which undergoes hogging moment hogging moment comprises of moment due to balance section and compression reinforcement provided as it is a doubly reinforced so for computing the moment due to balance section we have to consider this formula that is mu limiting 0.133 fck bd square we will consider limiting depth of neutral axis which is 0.46 times depth of the column effective depth of the beam and for fe 500 it is 0.46 for fe 415 it is 0.48 now we have computed the moment due to balance section and area of steel due to balance section comes as 2866 mm square and area of steel due to balance section so for this moment the area of steel required will be 2866 mm square so moment due to ASC will be 0 and hugging moment at the right will be equal to 608.52 kN meter for example let me provide a smaller beam then you can see here moment due to balance section is 49.73 kN meter and area of steel due to balance section is 556 mm square and the reinforcement provided here is 750 mm square so 194 that will be equal to subtraction between these two value this is the area of compression is still provided and moment due to this is basically computed using this equation so here we will compute the value mu as we have mu limiting and fsc being uh, design stress and this is equal to 0 0.87 into fy asc being the area of compression steel so we'll get this value as 17.75 kN meter so and hogging moment will be equal to summation of these two and total moment will be the summation of sagging moment plus hogging moment but for now it is not this case so we get the hogging moment at right as 608.52 kN meter only so the total moment for the beam that is summation of sagging moment and hogging moment will get this value as 795.96 kN meter check for strong column weak beam so summation of design moment of resistance of the column above and below this came as 1457 and summation of the design moment of resistance of beam this comes as 795.96 kN meter and finally the ratio comes as 1.83 which is greater than 1.2 so it is okay in case of Indian standards it is 1.4 so for that also it is okay so i hope this video helped you and if this video helped do like and subscribe our channel comment on the video and share with your friends thank you